Ironically, the tougher, more blue-collar team, Vincent Goodwill, resided in glitz and glamour Miami as opposed to Philadelphia, led by Jimmy Butler, four straight 30-point road games. He did this for me in the bubble in that finals run, and now I find myself thinking like this again. Like, how much does Jimmy Butler, Vinny, make you recalibrate your rankings when it comes to top players in the NBA? Recalibrating means that he's not already in that upper echelon for me. He's always been there for me. How he's upper? a culture setter. How he, upper he's not, though? He's not singular superstar as far as, you know, top five guys. Remember we did our, our rankings a couple years ago, like a year and a half ago, and I told you Jimmy Butler yeah. was a top 10 player, and both of y'all looked at me like I was borderline. No, both of, y'all, both, both of y'all ain't do that. Whoa, 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 that's revision is history. After the, I, I have, it might be. yeah, okay, it might be. but but but, point, but but exactly, but that was for for effect purposes. Go right ahead, Benny. Keep cooking. <laughs> but but I, I I think when you look at the way that he's played throughout these playoffs, his his game elevates. Last year was an anomaly yeah. where he where he played poorly and he, he looked like he was hurt. But usually he raises his game beyond his regular season exploits. And now he's at the point that next to Giannis and maybe even including Giannis. There's not a guy that's playing better on both ends of the floor in this entire playoff than Jimmy Butler. And we've seen this before. Yeah, we saw it in the bubble. But if you mean to tell me that with home court advantage and Eric Spolster putting pushing the buttons that he's pushing, that you're going to actually bet against the Miami Heat? I know we've long decided that the winner of the Bucks celtics series is going to be the team that represents the Eastern Conference in the NBA Finals. But I don't think that way. And I think the Miami Heat will have something to say about that especially if this Celtic series with the Bucks go seven. And you know that the Miami Heat are not afraid of the Milwaukee Bucks as world champions or as anything else. They feel like they have a formula, especially, y'all, if Chris Middleton is at half or 75 or 60 percent. Like, this is going to be even a greater knockdown dragout series than what the, than what the Celtics are giving them right now. And, and Miami has something for the Celtics in the bubble, so they're not afraid of the Celtics either. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, Vinny. What do you think? Uh, what's behind the effing Tobias Harris over me? Is it as simple as that? That he took that personally? Or was that a performative thing? Jimmy Butler, ever the showman, too, giving you something uh, to talk about before he goes into the locker room? Yes. You asked if it was one <laughs> or the other? Yes, because it's both. Because Jimmy Butler is honorary because Jimmy Butler remembers every little thing everybody says about him. I'll tell you a personal story. I was in Chicago covering the Bulls and Jimmy Butler was making the ascension to star superstar. And we were in Golden State. They were practicing. The team was going on some excursion. He wanted to get shots up. I was waiting on the cab and I hadn't gotten to know him yet. So we were just standing around just shooting it. And he says to me, who do you think is better? Me, Paul George, or Kawhi Leonard. Now, Paul George is still in Indiana. Kawhi Leonard hadn't gotten hurt the first time, and I'm on the beat just trying to get to know this dude. I could have lied. <laughs> I could have lied, oh. y'all. No, you know I mean? keep it a buck. But you I did, kept it a but buck. you got to keep it a buck. Yeah. I kept it a buck. I said, Jimmy, I think you're really good, but you're not either one of those dudes. So he says to me with the straightest of faces, I'm going to prove to you that I'm better than them. And that year... I think he blocked Kawhi's shot at the buzzer. He scored another one over PG at the buzzer and let me know about it on the way <laughs> to the locker room. So if you think that he's not talking about, he's not even talking about Tobias Harris there. He's talking about Ben Simmons because the choice the yeah. Philadelphia 76ers made was Ben Simmons over him because Ben Simmons right. wasn't comfortable with not having the ball. So that meant by right. proxy, they were going to give the money to Tobias Harris and not Jimmy Butler, right. and everybody knew it at the time that that was the biggest mistake that the 76ers have made, essentially, over the past, you know, process era. They had a championship team basically in the palm of their hand, and they gave it away. Serves them right. It, it, well, it's yeah. a mistake, but I'm glad they made it because Heat culture and Jimmy Butler just go hand in hand. Like, I'm just glad he's in Miami. That's where he belongs. You know, they bring out the best in him. He's a he's the perfect driving force for Pat Riley and Eric Spolster's group. But let's go back to those Sixers. Where do they go from here? Mm. 
No, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, hey, loaded, open ended, open ended. There's so many ways to take that. <laughs> okay, look, Doc Rivers is the easy fall guy, and I know Daryl Morey said that he's not going to fire him, but everybody right. wants to come at Doc's head. Everybody wants to say that this is Doc's fault. Do you see his second best player in the two years that he was there? He had can't shoot, won't shoot, and then he got can't shoot, won't shoot part two and James Harden. What was he supposed to do? Now, you know that Daryl Morey loves him some James Harden. He doesn't feel like he can win or compete in any other direction. If I'm Joel Embiid, I am on the phone with my agents at CAA saying I don't care what my contract extension was because he did re-up recently over the past year. So he did yeah, re-up like with four them. Years. Yeah. yeah, and I'm telling him, get me up out of here because it's always been franchise instability with ownership in the front office, with the coaching staff, with the roster. He has not known stability since he's been there. And you're going to ask him to wait again on James Harden, maybe having a summer where he's not just hanging out with the baby and hanging, but putting the work in. That was an utterly unforgivable performance from James Harden last night. I'm not going to say what the words were that were floating through some of the text message chains that I was that I was rocking with last night. But oh, y'all you know on this show. No, 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 no. But you, but you know what that looked like. It, it, it mm -hmm. looked like the intent. It looked like the James Harden special. The James, you know what the James Harden special is, y'all. That is, mm. if the series is about to end, let me hurry up and make <laughs> it happen now. <laughs> He's not going to help pull the nose up of that airplane. Right. It's going to be 11 right. turnovers. It's going to be 6 for 24. Or do what he, he did. Gonna he do was it. Casper the friendly ghost. He was literally he gonna do it nowhere expeditiously. to be found. Yes. He's going to get it over yes. with expeditiously. <laughs> he ain't going to mess around so with it. You think he... <laughs> Mr. Sands, Mr. Sands. Sit the chains by the door. Expeditiously. <laughs> <laughs> you think he did it on purpose? Like, that was a terrible game. But do you think it was intentional for him to make a statement like, hey, I can't I can't play in this offense with this coach or you, you, you got the brakes on me. You can't let me be free. I, I, it, was there anything intentional about such a sorry game and a sorry second half from Harden? Okay, you tell me this. If it wasn't intentional, what was it? Because James Harden is a guy that can get his shot up, even in his diminished state with his hamstring injury. He's a guy that can always get his shot up. He's got a tight handle. He's left-handed. He can get to the lane and even attempt to draw fouls. How many times did you see him touch paint in the second half yesterday? I would venture to bet y'all, he didn't even cross the three-point line on either end of the floor. You know who plays like that? 55-year-olds. Dudes who are playing, not even at the wild, but they're playing against some young dudes and they just trying to break a sweat without breaking their back. That's what James Harden looked like last night. And he has done this repeatedly in all these type of different spots. And y'all got the nerve to step somewhere and tell me that James Harden is the best offensive player in the history of basketball when he done acted a fool on three different franchises and got the nerve to have his hand out saying, I want a, you know, $45 million player option next year and then ask for another $200 million, please. Got Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. Let's go to the opposite and talk about a dude that wants it, a dude that thrives this time of year, Luka Doncic. How soon, we, we talked in the past about the, the unofficial and mythical passing of the best player in the game, Torch. You know, hmm. We know you were very much ahead on Kevin Durant taking that from LeBron James. Uh, mm -hmm. Giannis has that now. How soon before Luka has that, the way he's performing in these playoffs and, and in the playoffs in general? He ain't close. Because it's ain't great in the to being in the conversation for best players in the game. When we're saying conversation, how big is the conversation? You know what I mean? Are, are we saying Kelly Stop. rolling knee along? Or are we saying, you know, I'm saying, are we just I'm saying, okay, the net? I'm saying, are we extending okay, the here's, net? A, here's what I'm net? saying. All right, I'll, I'll be more specific. He doesn't have an MVP to his credit. I think he was he fifth in this year's ballot. Or I, I forget what the voting results were. I think he might have been fifth. Okay, so. Right. All right, Giannis number one, set him over there, right? Mm -hmm. Embiid, Embiid, great player. We blame Harden, we blame Doc. He was hurt, fractured old, over the ball, gonna need thumb surgery, whatever, whatever. But Embiid ain't won nothing, okay? Giannis might might be about to go farther than Embiid has ever gone, okay? Jokic, and I know you got thoughts on Jokic as MVP as back-to-back -back MVP this year. 
great player. He ain't won nothing. Okay, we don't know if and when Durant will reclaim his status as a champion and therefore by extension arguably the best player in the NBA. The list goes on and on. Luca, his playoff numbers are historic. If yes, he continues are. to go deep and win in the postseason where reputations matter, you just lit in the James Harden because of all the crap he's done, all the great stuff he's done in the regular season and nothing to show for it in the postseason. If Luca is playing like this in the postseason, you can't dismiss out of hand the notion that Luka Doncic very soon could be considered the best player in the NBA. If yes, he has a I can dismiss on it. his resume. Yes, I can dismiss it because when I was Giannis the best game, player in the NBA before last year, I believe it was Kevin Durant. But what Giannis did was make his weaknesses not a weakness anymore. His weaknesses were. Is, are you going to make your free throws? Are you going to mm -hmm. be able to score when defenses load up on you? Luca's weaknesses right. are a little different. His weaknesses A, defensively, we know he's not defending. Mm -hmm. B, mm -hmm. who else gets off when you're on the floor? Nobody, he, he dominates the ball. He gets a lot of assists, but he dominates the ball. And secondly, it's a lot of ISO. He's almost, I won't say James Harden-esque when he doesn't have the ball, but he's not really a helper when he doesn't have the ball. He's not someone that's a threat off of it. He's not cutting. Okay. He's not making himself. And to me, gotcha. if we're talking about best player in the game, you've got to do something else beyond being as great as he is. There's a level above it that isn't statistical to me because I feel like, hey, we're in a live ball era. We're in a completely juiced ball era with the way that the rules sure. are, the, the three-point shot and everything else. And that's not to take a dump on his numbers, but it's to place it in proper context so that I'm not going to be seduced by the numbers. You're not going to be Robin Givens blowing in my ear telling me I got an eyelash or something like that, but which is to tell me that Luka Doncic <laughs> is the best player in the game. That well, no, but, 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 here, here's what, but, here, but, here, but here's where I got to call bullshit oh, on you because I read God. everything you write, Vinny Goodwill, and it wasn't that long ago. I think mm. it was after the first two games of this series mm. when you were writing about how the Dallas Mavericks – Priority one is off season is to get another star next to Luca. Okay. Yeah. So how can you? It can't be both things. It can't be yes, they, can. they don't have enough stars. You can't write that they don't have enough stars around Luca, and yet here he is in Game Seven against the best team in the regular season. That's not making them better. If they don't have stars, then by by extension, he's making who they have better. However, he's doing it. He's making. He's lifting the Mavericks. He is elevating the Mavericks in a way that you expect the best players to do. If you're saying you can't be the best player in the league because you're not dominant at both ends, I got no argument there. I got no argument for that. But if we're talking about somebody elevating his teammates, I can't accept that Luka Doncic is not doing that. Okay. Okay, Michael Smith. I, I see you like to operate on two different tracks here, but I'm gonna break this down. So I'm just so going by what you wrote. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I let you have the floor. I'll let you have the floor. I, what yeah, I, let what me do I wrote, shit. <laughs> it's my show. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is your show. You're absolutely right. It is, it is I your had show. to. I had to. I had to. But no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That, is, that is the pot calling the kettle beige on national TV. <laughs> you are absolutely <laughs> right, Michael Smith. No, here's the, here's the point. The point is, is three prongs. One, what the Dallas Mavericks have to do as an organization is completely independent from what Luka Doncic as an individual has to do to grow and evolve his game. Yes, they need to have okay. another superstar next to him who can function with Luka and without Luka, and there aren't that many players that can actually fill that bill. And thirdly, you're talking about him playing against the Phoenix Suns and helping lift them. Have you seen Chris Paul the last three games? Have you seen his movies? Chris Paul is doing as much to help the Dallas Mavericks lift their game as Luka Doncic is right now, if we Ooh. keeping it a buck. So... So, okay, so you want to move the goalposts talk about Chris Paul. So, it, so, so instead, instead of keeping it on Luca, you want to crap on Chris Paul. He gave you the answer, though. He gave you the answer, though. But then he moved it to Chris Paul. You, you but then he like conveniently answer, went at Chris Paul. But, it ain't that like his answer. He said, but he, he said, said, he, he, he said, said, not close. He, he said, yeah, one, not close to being that, in that what, conversation. The, what the Maverick, what the Mavericks have to do is independent of what Luca has to do individually. Okay, and I nodded. But then you said this is just as much about Chris Paul being bad. 
And I know because Vinny, you and I talk 24 seven. I know how you feel about Chris Paul. So you decided to Chris introduce Paul. the Chris Paul factor to this. You love crap on Chris, Chris Paul. <laughs> no, I think Chris, I think Chris Paul is a historic point guard. I think it's one of those things where it's a, a two way street when he has a great game like he did in a game two is man. Look how great he, how he is as a, as a 36 year old. Absolutely correct. No, and then when right. he turns you're 37 right. and 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 the slipper falls off of Cinderella. You can't People act like, me like quiet. that. We're not seeing what we seeing. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Keep that same energy. Keep it. Ain't that what Michael Irvin said when he's walking out the courthouse? <laughs> Keep that same energy. Keep it consistent. Keep that same energy. Same energy. <laughs> right. So, hey, it comes down to this game seven. Who do you got in game seven? Who, who, do, who do you feel most comfortable with based on the, the progression of this series? Team wise. I mean, take into a fact that Dallas has won three of the last four games and won them handily. I have a hard time believing that Devin Booker won't be close to Lucas equal in a game seven and that and that DeAndre Ayton won't do his thing. I still look at Phoenix in some total as a team that won 64 games. Now, our friend Karin Phillips says, that's what we get for bagging on the Phoenix Suns when they ain't got an extra shot creator. And he's kind of right. But when you build a team around Chris Paul, you can't have but so many shot creators or you will nullify his effect. I do wonder if the Jalen Brunsons and the Maxi Klebers and the Spencer Dinwiddies, if they'll hit those shots on the road, because we saw what happened in game five. It looked a lot like game six in reverse. So I'm going to say that home court is going to hold serve in game seven, whether or not Chris Paul actually shows up or not. Hey, last thing before we let you go, man, and, and we could do this. Of course, we could do this all day, but we got somebody standing by. Speaking of being on the road, your next stop is uh, to Golden State, right? You're going. Oh no, you're going to you're going to this game seven. You're going to Phoenix for game seven, but you've yep. been in the but Bay. There's only just there's only been in the Bay. But that one ain't. But that ain't gonna be a game seven. There ain't no game seven. And you said that, you said that game seven as if they go win tonight 40. and force the game seven. Okay, Vinny, you what? Vinny, Vinny, what what you see in that slip, series? Vinny? All I can say is Steph is shooting 31% from three and Clay is shooting 29% from three. And there are a lot of open looks that they're missing. I'm not saying that Memphis is the better team because any team that employs Dylan Brooks and let him let him go Carlton on a road game where you are up at double digits in the fourth quarter and nobody pulls him cannot be trusted. Sometimes experience beats out stupid when stupid is better. Great mic drop moment. Love you, Vinny. And I do love you. I was just giving you grief earlier. When you come on, brother, from another, it is your show. This is this is your, you live here. This is your house. You know where all you, you got a key. You know where everything is. And I didn't vote for Luca for uh, vote for Jokic for MVP. I didn't. I said it. That's okay. That's okay. But you but you don't think he's undeserving, right? No, 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 no. He's not Carmelo. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.